it's just immediately leading up. Um, so welcome to our next panel of the day. Uh, my name is Mark Snedeker. I'm a writer at Entertainment Weekly. And I'm geeking out a little bit right now because the cast of one of my all-time favorite shows is here today, reunited on stage here. You guys excited for this? That's me, right there. I'm talking, of course, about Sabrina the Teenage Witch. So, without further ado, let me just bring up this cast, because you guys want to see them. First up, please give your biggest round of applause you could possibly imagine for the star of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. She plays Sabrina Spellman. Give it up for Melissa Joan Hart. Keep it going for, uh, ah, there you go. <laughs> Have you read on the end over here? Uh, keep that going for Salem Saberhagen, Nick Bouquet. Kai. Give it up for Nick. She played one of Sabrina's aunts, the wonderful Hilda Spellman. Give it up for Caroline Ray. And what is Hilda without Zelda? Give it up for Beth Broderick. <laughs> All right, he won our hearts. He broke some hearts. It was a very on-off again thing. Uh, please welcome Mr. Harvey Kinkle, Nate Richard. <laughs> All right, you know him as the Quiz Master. Please give it up for Alimi Ballard. All right, it's good old Josh from the coffee shop, Josh Blackheart. Give it up for David Lasher. She plays Sabrina's wonderful roommate in college, uh, playing Roxy King. It's Soleil Moon Fry. And finally, the other half of it all, Morgan Cavanaugh. Please welcome Elisa Donovan. Sabrina Teenage Witch, please. Welcome everybody, thank you all so much for being here. Um, it has been 14 years since this show went off the air. I, I feel like we just could all use a little finger exercise maybe, like stretch those joints. We're all, you know, point, there you go. Did you ever get fatigued doing the, doing the finger? No finger fatigue? Uh, that's why we chose the finger, it's easy. <laughs> So um, obviously, so many people out to see you guys all here today. Um, let me ask you, um, Melissa, what is the strangest place Sabrina you ever saw Sabrina in the wild? You know, where the show ever came up and you saw Sabrina fans, a strange place. Well, I, I understand that I speak like 142 languages. So the show was very international, which was amazing. You know, that this kind of show would transfer over so many different kind of cultures and to so many different people, and uh, it really became a kind of worldwide thing. And, it didn't hit Europe until much later, actually. I was, um, right as the show was ending, I got married in Italy, and nobody there knew the show, but like two years later, went back for an anniversary trip, and all of a sudden, it, everybody knew the show, and everyone thought it was so new. So it was, it was interesting. Yeah. I, mean, I don't care. You and, get, uh, you get called witch in a lot of different languages. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, Strega is the Italian for witch. That's what they call it. I was even doing a movie in Cairo, Egypt, and they knew the show. I was shocked. I was like, really? Yeah. They were there. It's everywhere. Totally. I, I mean, Nick, I imagine uh, as the voice of Salem, you might get recognized just at like a Starbucks or something, you know, like doing the voice. Has anybody ever said, oh, excuse me, can I ask you a question? Are you, are you in Salem? The it only happens when I order a latte. <laughs> Once in a while, people, it's familiar. They go, there's something about you, but... It's normally that I think we went to high school level together, you know, so. That's all, that's all that's of us, everybody, we all get that, right? <laughs> yes, or, you know, the gym, or yoga together, or something. Totally. Well, I, I want to ask about um, some of the early years, at the beginning. Um, Sabrina was, uh, I believe when you were pitching this show, ABC uh, was the first network to say, you can have TGIF, you can have this time slot. What did TGIF mean to you? I mean, did you feel like the show was an underdog at the beginning? Well,
but um, she pitched it to, I think, four different networks in one day, and by the end of the day, I think she had three um, offers, but ABC was the only one that gave her a time slot, and TGIF was the time slot, and she said, that's where it belongs, we're doing it. So it was really, it was really Paula who did that. And for the cast, what did it feel like uh, at the height of TGI Mania? I mean, what, what was that? Like, Nate, Harvey and, Harvey and Sabrina were on and off again and on and off again and on and off again. Yeah. Did fans ever come up to you and say, look, dude, you gotta put a ring on it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the height of it, it, got, it, it did get pretty crazy. I, went, I remember going to a, a mall one time with my girlfriend at the time. We were going to a record store, Sam Goody. Oh, yeah. Remember those? <laughs> yeah. Who? Yeah. <laughs> So uh, we, we make it past the uh, perfume counter at Bloomingdale's and uh, one little girl perks up and then she whispers and she giggles and laughs and runs and screams and then another one and then and we had a mob of girls run. I didn't go into a mall for at least two years after that. I always used to joke that if every like uh, maitre d' at every restaurant were seven years old, we could get into any restaurant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but then you guys kept watching it and now you are like 25 so we can get into any restaurant. <laughs> Well, David, also to the point of this on and off again relationship, um, what did you fear? What did you feel and hear from people when Josh started getting involved and winning a little bit of Sabrina's heart in some of those seasons? Well, it was tough because people were used to them together, so not everyone took it so well. But uh, I think uh, it took time to find my place and win people over, and then eventually our two characters became friends. Um, and it was it was all good, but it was it was I think rough. You had to at fight first. for that love. I had to fight. You had to it. fight for that love. I had to earn it. Earn it. <laughs> He's a good guy. So down over on the end of the table, Elisa and Soleil, you guys join. Give it up, please, a little bit for uh, for the college the college years. Um, what was your impression of of the show when you were joining it, and how did it sort of feel different from other sets uh, you would later go on to uh, be a part of? Well, I I remember I think the first or second episode it was like the hundredth episode and we were like oh it just feels like two you know it feels like it was yesterday so we were coming into this incredibly successful environment and I had known Melissa because clueless what the series was on TGIF as well the first year or maybe two I don't know we only did one yeah, or two they launched at the same time moved. yeah they launched at the same time and um, so that whole culture of that time was really I mean, you couldn't go anywhere. Like malls were very. I mean, you couldn't go there. And I was, I was so excited because a, I got to work with one of my best friends, and I had been able to do Punky Brewster, which was such a fun show, and to come on to another. Thank you. And to come on to another timeless show was so great. A show that felt so timeless, where it was so fantastic and already a family, but they made us feel so welcomed. Yeah, it is very much around like family. a family, the whole show. We did things together and it was, it we, was hung day, day, we hung out day, we hung out at night. night. Yeah, we worked out, we worked <laughs> out at like four in the morning, went right. to work at 6 a.m. and then like, game you know, night at Paul's house. Game, game night. night. Game yeah. night at my mom's house. And then, you know, so we'd wrap it like, if we were lucky enough to wrap by like 9 p.m., we were out like, you know, hitting the bars. So we were, we, we, I, I don't mean, remember it being invited to any of <laughs> I feel you, man. Was, I feel you. Was, we were all like, 18. So Nick also was a writer. So while we were acting, he was writing. And then when we were we were partying, he was writing. And then when we were working, he was writing. Like so, he um, and now he's on a very popular show, Mom. So he's a writer. Oh. 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 Recovery multicam. <laughs> Nick, I, I did always want to know what was your day to day like? Like, what was a typical day like uh, on a Salem record day? You know, I spent most of my time in the room uh, writing these shows, especially, we would do like 24 a year, even more, 26, which is kind of unheard of now, so it's a grind, it's a factory, but the great thing is I got sprung whenever the cat was shooting scenes, and I'd go down and be off camera with a microphone, which was really fun, um, and I remember in the early going, one day, sitting on a stool while a crew member held a, a large fish tank over my head, so that it sounded like my head was in a jar. <laughs> it was like, those are my days, they were fun. <laughs> that's, that's not correct, because he used to, um, really, we can't take these microphones out. Okay, I'm just gonna hold it like this, this is very natural. Nick would be on the side, so imagine you're like, we're in this show, and they're like, look directly at the puppet, which the first season, 
didn't look like a cat, and um, <laughs> so looked a bit like an alcoholic rabbit wearing a hairpiece. Okay, a little bit. Looked a bit like cat. So we'd have to look at the cat, and then Nick would be speaking, and he would be so funny, and they're like, look at the cat, and inevitably, everyone was looking at the cat, except me, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, look at the cat. So eventually, you were no longer allowed to come down and be the cat. They would have Tom read it. Absolutely true. <laughs> we would, we would, we would. She couldn't, she couldn't, she would always be looking at Nick. <laughs> Every time they trained the cat, I... <laughs> the cat was better behaved than Caroline. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, the, cat, the cat was always there on take one, I will say that. Yeah, I would, I would say it was always easy to work with a cat. Always the cat easy. never forgot his lines. Never forgot his lines. <laughs> always you, on his mark. And you, <laughs> always and on then his you mark. find yourself talking to the cat and there are no cameras around and you're like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and I find myself like petting it. Oh. And it's like... <laughs> Where, does anybody know where the cat is now? I mean... Well, the last cat... I'm wearing it. That, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the, the, the puppet, the animatronic cat is, um, I think it's in a puppetry museum in Atlanta. It is. Right? It is. It's in a huge museum. Right? Yeah, and, um, I, and then I think um, the, the, the live cats, so we had many, many live cats. The last one alive was named Salem, actually. They named, right? It was Salem. And Beth was on an episode of Melissa and Joey, and we did a Halloween episode, and we, they brought in, we had to have a cat there, and they brought in, the cat trainer was the same cat trainer from Sabrina, Ooh. Kathy Pittman, and she brought in the last living cat from Sabrina, so um, I don't think it's with us anymore. So. He was pretty old then. Yeah. R.I.P. Did the cat recognize you, or did it kind of smell you? Oh, it, was, it did not, like, it was, we, we couldn't even touch him. We he were like, too friendly no, he was point. pissed. He was like, what are you He was an angry he was cat? Tired. Like no, he is currently appearing at CatCon. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I want to ask the whole panel. Um, raise your hand if you remember having like magic done to you, which all of you should raise your hand. I feel like. Oh, uh, magic done to us during the show. Like during yeah. the show. Yeah. If on the show you remember, I mean, I feel like looking at Nate. I an episode comes to mind where you like literally turned into a beast. Uh, do you remember that? Okay, like, we just retired. That was my favorite one. Really? I got to jump around in a dumpster throwing stuff. <laughs> they made, I still have the teeth. They made fangs for me and, uh, you know, all the prosthetics. Totally. And, yeah. It's like, what goes through your head when you do pick up a script? Um, like, Hilda and Zelda, they did so much crazy stuff in the other realm. Like, we often, I think, forget how much crazy, you know, reuniting lost people from time, this and that. What goes through your head when you get a script and you go, oh, oh, that's happening to me this week, oh my gosh. Oh my god, we flew vacuum cleaners, we flew, remember we used to have to put these rigs on and fly up in the sky? We, I mean, it just was endless. It, oh. We had like long tongues and long ears and, oh. Well, my favorite was going to the other realm. We'd have to go through the, you guys remember the closet? Like, oh, we'd have yeah. to go into the closet? Well, that closet was about as big as... <laughs> this space right here. So the three of us would go running in there, slam the door, and close our eyes because there were lightning strikes, these lights, these like crazy lights. And they would blind you if you had your eyes It open. would blind you. I mean, if you walked in, you had to try to hide and duck and cover your eyes because you walk out of there just feeling like, you know, you just had a seizure, like crazy. And it was they warned like, you every time. It was always such an adventure. Because you wouldn't know until you got the script, and then it'd be like, wait, there's reindeers at Christmas, and we're like, what are we working with? What do you know? Like, the quiz the master like, lived in the other realm. Yeah. I had a Play giant yeah. mouse oh, was yeah. my roommate. That's in the river of candy corn. Like, my guy lived in the other realm, and I had a, a dispute. It was like a, like a squatter in my apartment. It was a giant mouse. I forget the actor, but he was so funny. He was squatting in my place, and he wouldn't leave. I never forget this guy in this giant uh, mouse costume. It was awesome. So, uh, starting with Elisa, I'd love to go down the line and find out where you think your character might be now. Oh. Obviously the show ended, Serena and Harvey riding off into the sunset, but, um, you know, it's been a little bit. Well, what do you think happened to Morgan? I think Morgan would probably be driving some very wealthy man very crazy, <laughs> and probably at the same time maybe stalking Josh on the side and still probably trying to give Sabrina advice, fashion advice. Uh -huh. I, I think Roxy probably started a punk rock band, maybe moved to New York City, had a couple kids. Uh, she was so much fun, because she had an edge, but she had a heart of gold, and, and that was always really fun to play. Um, I think 
while Josh is being stalked by Morgan, I'm probably still stalking Sabrina. Uh, and I think my character was like a photographer. They gave him like a real passion. I think he's probably a uh, uh, successful photographer. I think the quiz master would be like a nanny teacher now, like he moved on to teenagers. Now he wants to get on the ground level, he's teaching kids, the little magic kids, how to hold their bottle with magic, and I think he would have moved to Miami. Got rid of the mouse, he got a nice little pad next to LeBron down there, to UA, and he's chilling on the beach. And when he's not, you know, teaching kids, he's, uh, he's hanging out, he's surfing, something like that. Um, well, Sabrina and Harvey would probably be having a, a 16 year old at this point so i think because of the rules i think i'd be banished somewhere like robbie benson I, uh, no it was always the mom it was the mom who was the, well, mom? the mom became the ball of wax but oh the, 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 yeah robbie's robbie the benson got be stuck like, in the book the kids would be like a quarter magic or something yeah. i mean probably actually we probably figured it out and probably became like uh uh like a started our own like uh hogwarts you know like like started our own <laughs> witch school oh, for, for, it, for like it. you know maybe foster some children that are like part mortal part witch and how to navigate that world this would make I a great this movie. is a great this is a great idea right everybody yeah. heard it here right here right here he's writing it right now as we speak <laughs> i say screw the cw we got the project right here there you go uh -oh. Uh -oh. And so I was driving an Uber in the other realm. <laughs> I, I think it's so sad. I think I probably live with Salem alone somewhere and like pine for Drell, some pathetic thing. Did you marry Martin Mull? I did not marry Martin You Mull. married Martin You, you know got, what? This is a crazy story. Married? The who actor who I married, his name was Douglas Sills. And one day in my old apartment, he lived across the street. And I looked out the window and I was like, oh my God, that's my husband. <laughs> and my nephew said, you're married? <laughs> and I was like, it was so weird, I looked right into the apartment. I think we are living together and Salem is still consigned to being a cat for trying to take over the world. Um, I think he's into Sudoku. Um, <laughs> you know, and um, role, I think he's into role playing, you know, the whole thing. I think he's, you know. Goes to Comic Con. <laughs> He's probably out there right now. <laughs> and Sabrina? Well, I think I think we would probably. I like the idea of the Hogwarts thing. Like, I would like to be I like. like it. That's you nice. did? Yeah. I don't know. I don't listen. Um, <laughs> like, you know, I think that that. I mean, I think that would be a good thing for them to do together. You know, like. Do, do I get some magic finally? Is it? Yeah. Well, no. I I would I would you know maybe you you kind of do room. magic and I'm just kind of helping you out behind you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you want a beer? Okay, honey. Like I'll go with that. Now, how, how do we all feel about the word reboot? I, I mean, I have you all up here. It's a, it's, it's the question I have to ask you. I well, mean, so you guys heard, so there, the CW is doing one. It's not, we're not involved. It's not, it's no longer Heartbreak, my mom and I. It's not our project anymore. Archie Comics reverted, the rights reverted back to them. And they're doing the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, which is a darker sort of twist. Um, so I think our show was like about magic and family, and I think the new one, it sounds like, I have no idea, but it sounds like the new one's going to be more about, like, witchcraft, dark stuff. I think it sounds more Buffy the Vampire Slayer than it does Sabrina. So I think it'll appeal to a different kind of audience, um, and it'll be a totally different show. Yeah, I feel that. I, I do want to ask, I, I feel like um, the show was, I think the show pushed the needle forward in, in a lot of cool ways. I love seeing... Uh, Sabrina living with her two aunts and living with her two friends. It just, I feel like it was literally a show about powerful women, literally powerful women. Yes. Did you guys ever feel that while you were filming it? Did you ever feel like a little bit ahead of its time or a little bit right of its time? Or? Uh, I felt fashion forward, if you don't mind me interjecting that. Oh. Lime green satin. I felt like he pushed the envelope. Uh, the, the, the rainbow tuxedos. I felt like the, the quiz master was out there. He's out in front. I, I really felt like there was a distinctly, which at the time I don't know if I was quite conscious of it, but there was a distinctly different feeling on that set and so much of it was because it was really about women. And not that there was anything, you know, from Paula running the show and other, other show runners as well, but Paula at the head and essentially about one, three of you at first and then when, when Beth and Caroline moved on it was still, it's always about this strong powerful girl who was becoming a grown-up. 
and I think it's awesome in that way. And I think that it, that, like, I think that shows like Bewitched and I Dream of Genie, this magic element always is always alive. I mean, look, you guys are here because basically because you believe in magic, right? Yeah. Um, and so I think that that is something that is just timeless, international, and I think that that's. Um, I, I hope that the show goes on to live the way like Bewitched and I Dream of Genie lives in my heart. We once got this award. Do you remember this? We got this award in England. It was like a family award. They were like, we were we were being like honored for being a family show, and they were interviewing us. I don't know if you remember this. And she was like, we love it. We love that she lives with her gay aunts and her gay cat. <laughs> <We're like, "What?" laughs> gay cat. I knew all the time. <laughs> you guys didn't see what went on at night in that house. <laughs> oh. Does anybody remember um, any of the 90s guest stars uh, that were on the show? I mean, Brian we got... Cranston. Yeah. Well, Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston, yeah. Cranston. Backstreet uh, Boys. Milo, Milo Ventimiglia. Usher. Usher. George Went. Milo, he was there. Johnny Knapp. Britney Spears. Insane. Backstreet Boys. Dick Van Dyke. Dance. Paula Abdul. Kathy Arlen. Lana Teller. Who was uh, the... Who, who was the biggest fan? Was anybody a huge, like, diehard fan? Hanson was awesome. That was awesome. Hanson. Hanson. Who was the Christmas Hanson? Hanson Maniac? Johnny Mathis. Johnny Mathis. Johnny Mathis. Johnny Mathis. David Jones. I was like, oh, Davy Jones. I was like, yes. I just remember playing tennis with Andy Roddick. Kate Jackson. Randy Travis. Remember Randy Travis? We had a lot. We were really, really lucky. We uh, we had a healthy budget and we had a fun show and everybody wanted to come be a part of it. And a lot of people, their kids love the show, so they wanted to do it so, so they could do it for their kids. Yeah. yeah. Eric Estrada. Mm -hmm. uh, Gary, it's so fun to have your kids grow up with it now. You know, like that our little ones get to watch it. My daughter over there was saying when you're a fan, she is. Jack, you know, I know. Like, it's true. It's so great to do shows that then you can watch with your children. Totally. Matt, do you know something cool that when we left the show, I don't know that there were any, but since that time, we are parents to 15 children yeah. between our entire panel. Wow. That's so yeah. My four and Melissa's three <laughs> take a yeah. half. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I feel like the minority, but I only have one. My goodness. Thanks, <laughs> thank God. Yes. So, my last question, Melissa, what, what does it mean to you just to see all of these people out here still supporting Sabrina uh, all these years later? I think it's awesome. You know, every actor wants to have that one role that's iconic, that speaks to people, that people relate to. And we all say the same thing that, you know, when, when fans come up to us and they say, we grew up with you, that is the biggest, the biggest compliment we could ever receive for, you know, working hard all those years. And we worked long hours, we did some strange things, but we had a blast. And a lot of our crew stayed together for seven years too. So, you know, it wasn't a revolving door on our set. It was very much a family. And we had, and we knew we were having a blast. And um, we, we appreciated every moment. We appreciated every fan for the fact that we were able to do that. And it just makes us feel good that so many people enjoyed it and enjoyed our work. And what more can you ask for? Woo! Love it. Well, everybody, thank you guys for coming out. Please give a real last big round of applause. Thank you! Thank you guys for Keep it going, keep it going. There you go.